Hates medicosis perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, we continue our great playlist called Signs in Medicine. In previous videos, we have talked about Homan's sign, Koenig's sign, Brzezinski sign, Gower's sign, Chavestic sign. Today, it's time for Trousseau sign of latent tetany. Because there are two Trousseau signs in medicine, the first one called Trousseau signs of latent tetany, you find this with hypocalcemia, because when you have hypocalcemia, you'll have increased nerve excitability, and it might lead to carpal spasms, pedal spasms, etc. The next one is called Trousseau sign of visceral malignancy, or Trousseau syndrome, and this is migratory thrombophlebitis seen in any deep internal cancer, such as like visceral cancer, example, gastric cancer, pancreatic cancer, etc, etc, and so on and so forth. Let's first go back to history and talk about Armand Trousseau, the story of a great 19th century encyclopedic clinician, to say the least. He was the first person to say the word aphasia and to say form frusta, more on that later. He's probably the one who said even a broken clock gives the correct answer twice a day, because he was sick and tired of these doofus incompetent physicians getting the diagnosis correct some of the time. He was an oncologist, a neurologist, an endocrinologist, and even a phlebologist. And you'll understand why, because if you can connect the dots between hypocalcemia and increased nerve excitability, and then discover a sign, a clinical sign, to prove these titanic contractions, such as carpopedal spasms, you are such an impressive stud. Next, to connect the dots between visceral malignancy, such as pancreatic cancer, and superficial thrombophlebitis, you gotta be very good at oncology and phlebology. And that's the story of the second sign, Trousseau sign of visceral malignancy, or Trousseau syndrome. He invented that Rousseau tracheal dilator, he was big on laryngoscopy and laryngeal diseases and laryngeal thesis, and thesis means wasting. Watch my video on TB because tuberculosis is also known as thesis pulmonalis when your lungs are totally wasted. Trousseau and Lallemand coined together the term Trousseau Lallemand bodies that we now call Benz Jones proteins. Please let me know in the comment section what is Benz Jones proteins, what conditions do we see Benz Jones proteins in, and what is the difference between the Benz Jones protein and the TAM Horsfall protein. He encouraged people to use eponyms in medicine. And then we started the tradition of naming the disease after the doofus who discovered it. So you have Hodgkin's lymphoma, Graves disease, Bell's palsy, Brudzinski sign, Khalil swab, etc. And then it went downhill from there because every doofus is trying to just get their names in the textbook. Case in point, fix principle. And now this is the sad story. He died from gastric cancer and while he had gastric cancer, he showed to the so sign of visceral malignancy. He had thrombophlebitis. Imagine waking up in the morning, looking at the mirror only to find that you have the sign that you have discovered and he later died from gastric cancer. This is so sad. It also reminds me of Lenick, who invented the stethoscope and used it to diagnose tuberculosis. Later, he died from tuberculosis while he could listen to the signs of tuberculosis in his own lungs using his own stethoscope. Now, the difference between forme fruste and forme plein. Forme fruste is when you show mild form of the disease. Example, a patient with rheumatoid just having mild joint pain. Forme plein, on the other hand, is when you have the complete, full-blown picture of the disease, and this is severe. If this is rheumatoid, you will see swan neck deformity, boutonniere's deformity, zeta thumb deformity, MCP subluxation, ulnar deviation, piano key sign, joint destruction, flexion contractures of the elbow, cervical spine subluxation, normocytic normochromic anemia, lymphoma, pericarditis, pleurisy, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. English-speaking doctors unfortunately do not use these terms. That's why they are doofuses, generally speaking. Oh, senior doctor, I could not understand that this patient had DIC. Where is bleeding from every wound, bleeding from every orifice, bleeding from every scratch? I will not respond to you. I will let Gordon Ramsay respond. Hey, big boy, listen. Take responsibility for your actions. There is difference between forme fruste and forme plein. F me! 
in my 30 plus years in the culinary industry, I've never seen so much arrogance and stupidity. Here's the story of another doofus. Imagine that you had a patient coming to you. She complains of just pain in her fingers or to make it more dramatic, just pain in her little finger and the medial border of the hand. Oh, dear lady, please do not worry about it. Just take some ibuprofen, ketoprofen or oxyprosen or something like that and go home, relax, enjoy life and you'll be fine. Doofus, she had a heart attack. Oh, I didn't know that heart attack can present as just pain in the fingers. Hey, go to any rheumatology textbook. Look up the differential diagnosis of finger pain. You'll find heart attack there. And then open an English dictionary and look up the word incompetent. You'll see your picture next to it. Did you take history? Did you ask about her family history? Risk factors. Did you ask about a pain that gets worse on exertion and relieved by rest? You are just a doofus with a stethoscope. Functions of calcium from the previous video. We have uncharged calcium, just cram it into bone and give it some structure. But this is not the functional physiologically active calcium. The physiologically active calcium is the free calcium floating freely in the bloodstream. Freedom is cool. And in the previous video, we have talked about the difference between total body calcium, plasma calcium and free calcium. To illustrate this point, look at this big circle. This is your total body calcium. 99% of your total body calcium is in your bone, okay? And this is not active because it's not free. It's bound to bone. Cool. And then 1% in the cell. Who cares? And then 0.1% in the extra cell fluid. Who cares? Oh, shut up. This is what we care about right here. Because part of the ECF calcium is the free serum calcium. And it's free unbound and therefore physiologically active and therefore it can cause symptoms when it goes up or when it goes down. Tetany is a condition where you have hypocalcemia. Hypoparathyroidism is another condition with hypocalcemia. This is the calcium that we're talking about. Other calcium is just bound to albumin, other calcium is bound to organic or inorganic compounds. When you order serum calcium, you're measuring these three together. Please understand that you're just looking for the free calcium. It's very expensive to just measure that. So we assume that when your plasma calcium is low, your free calcium will be also low as long as your albumin is fine. What is the most common cause of calcium problems? Albumin problems. When you have no albumin, calcium is gonna just leave the albumin because I don't find it and calcium will be floating freely in the plasma and this is active calcium therefore physiologically active therefore can cause symptoms it tears my heart into pieces when i see an online blogger talking about calcium and confusing the bone calcium with the cellular calcium with the ecf calcium and then the albumin calcium with the free calcium with the one bound to like what are you talking about not to mention that he is confusing correlation with causation not taking into account selection bias, experimenters expectancy and outcome switching. My dear blogger, as Patrick Moynihan said, you're entitled to your own opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. So this free calcium, which is physiological active, is just 0.05% of your total body calcium. Yet this is the one that causes all of your symptoms. Hypercalcemia, hypocalcemia, both are not fun. Romeo's strength was in his heart but the calcium strength is in the charges. Functions of calcium, calcium contraction. And we have talked about digoxin in the previous video, how it alters these channels and pumps and leads to increased calcium inside the heart, which will increase contractility. Calcium contraction. These are all the drugs that affect calcium inside the heart. Therefore they can increase contractility or decrease cardiac contractility. Calcium blood coagulation and calcium is considered to be factor four of the coagulation factors. This is the only factor that's not made in the liver, not in the least. The calcium mnemonic, calcium contraction, calcium coagulation, calcium cohesion of bone, calcium problems, constipation, carpal pedal spasm, cardiac arrest during systole, contra excitability and contra QT interval. Watch my video called calcium mnemonic to learn more. The moral of the story is calcium is contra excitability. High serum calcium, I mean the free, charged, physiologically active calcium, low excitability of your nervous system. Decrease calcium, the opposite effect will happen. Tetany has low calcium in the serum, therefore hyper excitability, therefore 
positive, chivistic, and to sow signs. Therefore, carpal spasms, pedal spasm, and even maybe convulsions. People stop me at the grocery store all the time and they ask me, hey medicosis, why is calcium contra excitability? Now, I'm not gonna claim that I know why, but I'll give you something to think of. Remember that alkalosis is associated with hypocalcemia. Alkalosis hates the free serum calcium. Alkalosis will precipitate the calcium and therefore decrease the free calcium in your serum. Okay, why do I care? Because when they come together, they cause what? Increased synaptic transmission, especially at the post-synaptic membrane. Oh, so when I have low calcium, I have hyperexcitability of the post-synaptic membrane. Therefore, it's not a shock to find carpal spasm, pedal spasm, convulsions, positive chauvistic sign and Rousseau sign. These are called tetanic contractions. Acidosis, on the other hand, will inhibit synaptic transmission. If you have ever seen a person who is trying the ketogenic diet for the first time ever, they are so tired, it's unbelievable. Why? What are the ketone bodies? Can you tell me what are the ketone bodies? Just name them. Acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta hydroxybutyric acid. These are acids. They can lead to acidosis. Acidosis inhibits synaptic transmission you'll be tired. So you're saying that there is no upside to the keto diet? Shut up, I never said that. And as Dr. Thomas Sowell said, there are no solutions in life, there are trade-offs. There is another theory for why calcium is contra excitability, and it goes like this. When you have low calcium in your serum, this will decrease the threshold at which the fast-acting voltage-gated sodium channels become activated. In other words, now it's easier for the sodium to go inside the neuron. When sodium comes in, it's called depolarization or activation, which is hyperexcitability. I have hypocalcemia, I have tetany, low calcium, increased nerve excitability. Calcium is contra excitability. Never ever forget this. We have talked about that chivistic sign in the previous video. Now that Rousseau sign of tetany. To the so sign of latent tetany. First, wrap the blood pressure cuff of the sphygmomanometer on the patient's arm. Next, inflate and wait. Inflate the blood pressure cuff above the systolic blood pressure. So if the patient's systolic blood pressure was 120 millimeters of mercury, you should inflate to, let's say, 130. And then wait for how much? Actually, no one knows. Even Trousseau did not tell us. Some people say 3 minutes, 4 minutes, 5 minutes. I don't care. A positive Rousseau sign is carpal spasm if you are wrapping the blood pressure cuff around the arm or pedal spasm if you are wrapping it around the thigh. Let's talk about carpal spasm. Please describe it. You see flexion of the wrist and extension of all of the fingers. Now, what is the explanation of that Rousseau sign? Don't forget, calcium was low in your blood, which increases nerve excitability. Carpal spasm is a nerve excitability. Pedal spasm is a nerve excitability. Also, when you wrap and inflate the blood pressure cuff around the patient's arm, this will decrease blood flow, increasing the irritation of the nerve. So now the nerve is irritated and excitable, you get spasms. If your woke professor explained it to you like this, I will retire from YouTube and work as a plumber. If you want to get more of my videos, check out my autonomic pharmacology course on my website. It has 15 videos and 20 cases. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. In the next video, we'll talk about the obstetrician's hand and the gynecologist's hand. These are clinical signs in medicine, if you can believe it. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my antibiotics course and my autonomic pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.